The Durgod Venus, a badass name for a badass keyboard. And if you're in the market for a 60% board, let me tell you why you should put down the Ducky Mecha Mini and consider picking up this lesser known alternative. Sixty percent keyboards have been growing in popularity over the past few years due to their compact form factor that makes them ideal for gaming. But is this form factor right for you? Well, let's find out by getting this thing out of the box. So inside the box, we of course get the keyboard itself, along with two cables, a regular USB-C to USB-A and a USB-C to USB-C cable, which was a nice addition they threw in there so you can wire this up with something like a laptop or an Apple Pro display. We also get a keycap puller and a coaster, which is probably a tease for their mouse pads. We also get a user's manual guide, which if you're new to the 60% form factor, you'll definitely want to keep this around. And finally, a sticker and cable velcro strap. First impressions in the hands is that this keyboard feels very premium. It has a nice 820 gram weight and thanks to its aluminum frame there is no flex whatsoever. I mean this thing is solid. I feel like it can really take a beating. On the top outer edge we have the USB-C port to the left side and the opening is a bit recessed and while that's nice for keeping your cable secure you might just have some issues trying to fit some custom USB-C cables. Flipping the keyboard over to the back we have some rubber pads to keep the keyboard from sliding and that's pretty much it. Unfortunately there are no kickout feet which I would have love to see, but the keyboard does have a small angle to it for a natural elevation. The bezels on the Venus are nice and slim all around and they made just enough room on the top to include those LED indicator lights. Moving on to the keycaps, we have a nice simple font which I can always appreciate and the keycaps themselves are double shot TBT. So pretty much the best of the best, there really is no reason to change these out. But if you do plan to change these out, just keep in mind that they are a cherry profile so they're a little bit shorter than your typical OEM profile. So something else that I can really appreciate is if you take a close look at the space bar, it has this subtle curve rather than a sharp corner and it feels really nice on your thumb it's just kind of like a soft curved edge rather than a sharp edge and it's, it's just a small detail but it's the small things that count and I can really appreciate what they did here. So being a 60% keyboard we get the space saving benefits at the cost of the numpad, arrow keys, the navigation keys. Fortunately though compact keyboards give us a secondary function layer that gives us back a lot of that functionality that we would have in a full size keyboard just without the physical keys themselves. For example holding down function 1 key gives us the access to the secondary functions that can be seen side printed under certain keys. Also what's really nice is if you're somebody like me who values your arrow keys, you can actually enable that functionality on this keyboard by hitting the function 1 caps lock key. And what that will do is enable tap mode and that pretty much just converts your right shift function 1, function 2 and control keys into arrow keys. So that's really nice because all you need to do is tap on these keys and they will act as arrow keys and you can actually get the original functionality back by holding that button. So if you tap shift it will up arrow and if you hold it it will just be treated as a regular shift key. Now you can actually customize this keyboard and all the keys so if you wanted to you can set the arrow keys to different keys if you wanted to but to do that you would need to download their Hera compiler which is their software interface and while it's pretty simplistic it actually gives you everything that you need in here you can create up to three profiles which are accessible via the function 2 key under each profile you will find layers for default function 1 function 2 and function 1 plus function 2 I would leave the default alone you don't really want to change anything in there but under the other layers you can customize whatever you want so for example you can assign the arrow functionality to the WASD keys or whatever else you want. You can also even customize what the indicator lights represent which is pretty neat and in the macro section you can create your own custom macros by creating a new macro, selecting it and then recording your key presses. You can then go back to the edit menu and assign this macro to any key of your choosing and once you're satisfied with your changes just hit build if you want to save it or press download and it will download it to your keyboard. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite subject RGB and this keyboard definitely shines in that department. Get it? The colors look great and the keyboard has this white silverish plate behind the keys to reflect the light and really gives the board a nice vibrant RGB effect. I believe there are about 11 RGB effects that can be cycled through using the function 2 plus function 12 keys and the brightness and speed can be adjusted via the function 2 and WASD keys. Underneath the keycaps I got the cherry brown switches but impressively this keyboard is available in a range of switches including Kale, Cherry MX and Gateron and they even have a box jade as an option which typically you can only get if you're building your own custom board and you get them yourself so it's just always nice to see a wide variety of flavors but anyways let's do a sound test on these cherry browns
I gotta admit, this is close to one of the best typing experiences I've ever had on a pre-built mechanical keyboard. The switches feel really good, they sound great, and the stabilizers are absolutely amazing. They're sufficiently factory lubed and have little to no rattle whatsoever, and overall it's just a great typing experience. There is also minimal case ping, and that's due to the dampening pad that's under the PCB. Now I'm not sure what it's made of, but it is quite thick, and while it probably doesn't change the typing experience much, it does help with the nice sound and definitely minimizes the ping. The PCB itself is aluminum and looks pretty nice and clean. Now this is not a hot swappable keyboard so you will need to desolder if you want to swap the switches but with the wide range of available switches you can get on this thing I don't really think you'll ever need to do that. You should be able to pick this keyboard up with exactly the switch you're looking for or at least something close to what you're looking for and just not need to worry about changing them out. So there you have it that is pretty much the Dergod Venus mechanical keyboard and honestly compared to its more well-known competitors like the Ducky Mega Mini and the Ant Pro 2 I think this keyboard definitely holds its own. It has a strong aluminum housing and great build quality, nice RGB and the cherry profile keycaps make the board a bit more low profile and just nice to type on and it also has the widest range of switch and price points to choose from with the Gateron Blues coming in at $99 and going up to $149 for the Kale Box Jades. Overall this is a great keyboard and definitely something you should consider if you're looking for a 60% keyboard but if I were to name a few improvements I would love to see some kick out feet and maybe throw in some colored keycaps into the box so we can kind of flare it up a little bit and customize it a bit kind of like the ducky keyboards do. Alright guys that's gonna do it for this video hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to leave a like down below subscribe for future videos to come and I'll see you in the next one peace.